might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. This is God's word for God's people. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Mighty God, as we open your word this evening, as we hear the words that we have sung, the scriptures that we have read, as we think about the light of Christ, Lord, we ask that you would shine in our hearts this evening, that you would speak to us, Holy Spirit, in the depths of our being. Tune our minds, our ears, and our hearts to know your voice and to tell it apart from all others. Use whatever words I would offer, God, but you speak to us this night of nights, that we may do your will and yours alone. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. We've spent this season talking about where Christ has come to us from. If you haven't been with us over the last few weeks, and I see a lot of faces in from out of town or other places, uh, we've been talking a lot about the story, the people, the land that Jesus came from, and how those shaped and spoke to his mission, his purpose in coming. About the covenant story that God had been telling from the beginning. About the people, Israel, that he had called out to be a nation of priests, bringing God to the world and the world to God. About the family of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Jesse and David, and how their stories pointed to what Jesus would do here on earth, and how even showing up, not in the heart of big city Jerusalem, but in the little town of Bethlehem, spoke to God moving in ways we could not have expected. Not in the flash and pomp and circumstance that humans would think would be needed, but in this quiet, small ways. Israel had been expecting somebody for quite some time. And more and more as time had gone along, there was a buzz, there was expectation. When is this Messiah going to come? When will the Savior arrive? People had their ideas of what that was going to mean. A lot of people thought it was going to be the, the restoration of the kingdom of Israel and, and they were going to throw off the shackles of Rome and they were going to rise up and someone was going to take on the physical, temporal throne of King David as had they thought been promised. But God had even bigger plans than that. Musician Michael Card, at the beginning of his Christmas album called The Promise, sings this to us. The Lord God said when time was full, he would shine his light in the darkness. He said a virgin would conceive and give birth to the promise. For a thousand years the dreamers dreamt and hoped to see his love. But the promise showed their wildest dreams had simply not been wild enough. Because this coming Messiah that everybody had been expecting, they had not expected enough of. Because it wasn't just that a king was coming, it wasn't just a savior coming, it wasn't just some special holy figure some 
prophet, some new Moses, new David, new Abraham. No, God was turning everything upside down because God himself was getting ready to walk the earth. We don't read Galatians much at Christmas. Other times of the year, sure. And yet we read here, the fullness of time had come. I think about all God had done to prepare for this night. I was a, a history major in college, which is a really great degree if you want to work in the fast food industry. And I remember, I learned a lot about, about Roman and Greek history in particular. And I remember looking at these guys and, and reading the prophecies in Daniel of the kingdoms that would come and all the things he lays out with the Greeks and the Romans and thinking God was moving gigantic empires just to set Christmas up. Think about it. We have had a, a good number of world powers come through in the Old Testament times, but then these, these Greeks come through, and this guy Alexander plows through the ancient world and brings everybody under one language. And then the Romans come through, riding his coattails just a bit, and they literally pave the road from one place to another. And they're the ones running the show and say, you know what would be really great if we took a census. Let's make everybody go back to their ancestors' hometown and we're going to number them off. And thus began the holiday travel season. <laughs> and it moves a young couple to the right place at the right time. God working through Augustus Caesar. I mean, this is one of the legends of history. And God's like, this guy's just a part of the story. And God comes, taking on our flesh. Think of that miracle. Think of the, the intensity of that. God, who knows no bounds, who knows no limits. I mean, even when David was wanting to build him a temple, God is like, I don't live in houses made of human hands. I remember as a kid, we, I grew up at Seminole Heights United Methodist Church in Tampa, Florida, and, and we had these, these the, the pipes for the organ along the back of the church wall. And I remember, and I don't know what got this idea in my head, but as a tiny kid, I had a bit of an imagination. And I remember going to church every morning, looking at those pipes and thinking, wow, God lives back there. <laughs> And that's why we're here Sunday morning. A God who can't be contained in a church, who can't be contained in a temple, who can't be contained in all of creation, comes into a single cell. Microscopic. Unseeable. And begins to grow. The God who created the tongue has to learn how to speak. The God who formed our being has to figure out how to walk. I don't know how much, and, and, and scripture doesn't give us a lot of this period of, of Jesus' life. We don't know how much his, the fullness of his understanding uh, was there. Was he 
from a toddler able to uh, recite scriptures that he had dictated to prophets in ages past, we don't know. We know by the time he's a tween, he is absolutely schooling people in Jerusalem. But think about the infinite God coming down as the most helpless thing we know. A baby. The very image of small, vulnerable. And that's what God did for us. To set when he had set everything in the right place, had laid all of the pieces out, he comes. Not just stepping down out of heaven. I mean, that would have gotten people's attention, right? The sky cracks open and God descends. 19 feet tall. Even that would be limited. And proclaim something that the whole world can see and hear all at once. Instead, he comes small and helpless. Because it's not going to be in a display of power that he saves us. It's a beautiful echo between Christmas and Easter. God comes in weakness and vulnerability because he's going to save us in a moment of utter vulnerability. It's not going to be by strong arming the Romans, but by being nailed to a cross that he saves us. And in doing so, this is mind-blowing stuff, and doing so, it changes who you and I are as well. We become in Christ. When we accept him as our Savior, when we invite him into, his life, into our lives, when we take him as our Lord, we become something different. Paul, when he's writing Galatians, is talking a lot about the difference between what the Jews were living out in the Old Covenant, the Old Testament law, and what Christ has come to bring. And he's like, under the law, and it's the same law that Jesus was born under. He was born uh, to Jewish parents. He was circumcised under Jewish law, just as all of the other boys would have been in that time. And they were under that law. And Paul compares it to being almost there. Almost what they're intended to be. Children in those days sort of had a very similar status to slaves as a part of the household. They didn't fully have the rights and privileges. I mean, we're, we're not, you know, we, we sort of have a similar childhood now. You, you grow into responsibility over time. You grow into rights over time. And God said, before you were slaves, you were just partly in the family. In this, I'm bringing you in fully as sons, daughters, and heirs of the kingdom. Because all that had happened in that covenant in Israel had been working towards this night. That God would reconcile us through coming in our flesh, dying for us and rising again to make us sons and daughters of the Most High. Hear the good news. God came to earth 
for you. He wanted you back in relationship with him. He wanted to restore you to what he had intended from the beginning. He created us for relationship with him. And sin had gotten in the way. And rather than leave us in a state of separation from him, he puts himself in our shoes to bring us back to him. This is what we celebrate this night. This is what God did for you and me. We talk about it every year, but just dwell on it for a second. The God of creation, true light of true light, Did all of this for you to bring you home. This is our opportunity. This is the gift that he gives us. Let us pray. Almighty God, you came to save us, to restore us to relationship with you. To make us your daughters and sons again. You step down out of heaven. Into your own creation. To bring us back. Into relationship with you. Thank you God. Be our savior and our Lord this night. Forgive us for our rebellion and our sin against you. Forgive us where we have been so focused on our own story, our own plan, our own will, that we've missed yours. Be our Savior and our Lord and our King this night. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. As we uh, prepare... To spread this light around. True light and true light that has come into the world. We're going to share his light with all those around us. I want to give you a little bit of instruction with that. The, I'm going to light the candles of the ushers. They're going to come to the ends of the aisles. If you the, the person with the lit candle... Just keep it straight up. The person with the unlit candle, bring it over. It keeps wax off the seats and keeps the trustees meeting really civil in January. <laughs> we'll be passing the light down to the end of the rows and singing together, and then we will carry the light out into the darkness. Because that's what you and I get to do now. Carry Christ's light into a dark world that needs it more than ever. Let us stand and sing together.
this night of nights. Carry the light of Christ. God come in flesh out into the darkness that all may know the love of our Father. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, let us carry his joy into the world. Amen. Amen. Thank you.